Yeah. Good morning, folks, and welcome <clears throat> today's FMA discussion, episode 142, part two with Marco. And those of you who did not see the first episode, Marco in that episode went over his journey, his influences, and what has led him up to this point. We couldn't do the demos last time. Unfortunately, he didn't have a partner. So hence is why we're doing episode uh, part two, rather. And this is, will be covering a couple questions we didn't get to. And then, of course, the majority of this episode will be focusing on his demos. So with all that being said, hi, right, thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. Sure, sure. So, you know, um, and folks, if you're jumping in, you know, please tell us uh, where you're watching from and all that. And we're going to get started. So the last episode, for those who are uh, watching now or who will watch this, if you want to see Marco's first episode, that's episode 128 on FMA discussion on YouTube, and I'll, I could post a link uh, later here. But again, if you want to get some continuity as far as what led to this episode, I highly recommend you watch that episode. And again, that's episode 128. All right, we're going to jump into it. So, um, all right, let's see. You know, one thing I didn't get to, or maybe I did, I don't recall, but it's okay if we recover it for the folks who maybe didn't see the first episode. Your, your system name, Ronin, um, why and what does it mean? So the, 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 the whole name came from uh, um, my martial arts idol, which, which is uh, Miyamoto Musashi, the famous samurai, the famous swordsman uh, who was um, known as a Ronin. And uh, because generally uh, the, the, the term Ronin described uh, a wave man, someone that learned from different sources uh, basically, he was the Bruce Lee before Bruce Lee. He took different things which worked and uh, discarded those which didn't. So that, that's where the name comes from. Uh, the system in itself, it's, it's not a system as much as it is, uh, let's say, uh, a, a roof, a broader term for uh, grappling, striking, and uh, weapon work. Okay. No, no, me, me. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I'm trying to remember if I asked you that. I'm thinking I didn't, so, but uh, good. I'm glad we uh, got that. All right, Martin, uh, before we get into the other stuff, Martin did have, um, uh, uh, before we get into the acts and some of, but Martin had a question before that we didn't get to, and it was basically on your night design. Um, yeah. Let's, uh, let's get into that. Sure, sure. Just, just a sec. Sure. So this is, uh, I don't know if you can see it well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, perfect. Yep. Okay, so this is the, this is the witch finger. This is uh, my collaboration with uh, Joe Huck. So Joe, uh, uh, Joe is a knife maker from uh, Wisconsin. Uh, he makes all sorts of knives. Uh, and uh, we, I reached out to him. I wanted, uh, I wanted a, personal, a personal knife for myself. And mm. uh, he said, I think that would I send it the design because I, I made this prototype in 2017. I was playing around with the idea of a small uh, close quarter fighting knife, which you can draw uh, in grappling range and in close quarter clinch range. Mm. And, uh, when he saw the design, he was like, I'll make a bunch of them so we can like uh, uh, sell them together. Like we can market it together as a basically it's a handmade knife. Like it's a handmade knife. This isn't uh, made in China. <laughs> this mm. is all American made. Uh, and uh, for the price of uh, that's less than some factory knives. So uh, basically uh, the design of this is, I'm sorry, I, I keep uh, moving the knife because the image is inverted. So my, <laughs> my left is your right. It's okay. Yeah, right yeah. there is good. Yeah. So basically uh, the knife is um, under, uh, it's 5.8 inches. So it's legal in all, I think, America, uh, all USA states. Uh, it's yeah. legal almost anywhere in Europe. Uh, the blade, uh, the blade length is um, two point eight inches. Two point eight. Okay. Uh, it's a it's a compact knife, but the blade is very thick. It's uh, yeah, three six. Yeah, no. uh, it's three six. It's overbuilt, which I like. Uh, the no, handle it's well built. Thick. Yeah. Yeah, and the handle is thick. But basically, when you grab it, uh, it fills up your hand. It has all, mm. all of these models uh, have this um, pattern on it for th these grooves, which offer a better grip. And the beautiful thing about this knife, uh, even though it's small, you can 
still do the assisted uh, slashing with the thumb. Because right, with the thumb, the power assisting. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because a lot of these small knives, they don't have that option because either they're too thin mm. or because of the, the design of the blade, because it's so small that you can't do assisted slashing. Again, the knife is generally designed uh, as a close quarter uh, get away from me knife. So let's, mm. uh, let's say you're carrying a gun. You, you, I don't know, you carry a gun and someone's uh, reaching for your gun and you draw this basically for uh, to stab, not so yeah, much. Offset their hand, yeah. Okay. yeah. But it can still uh, double down as an EDC knife. So it can mm. still double down as, as an EDC knife. The uh, Persian upswept design was... Um, uh, it was a feature which I like because a lot of the times in grappling, uh, what I do is grab the blade. So if we're grappling, I'll grab the blade and try to do it this time. You cannot grab this blade because once you start grabbing it, you're basically impaling yourself. Um, you can't get the leverage to disarm. Yeah, yeah, this knife. Yeah. And because of this pronounced choil, whenever you stab something hard, your uh, your hand's not going to ride onto the Lie blade. Lie down it. Yeah. Which is a big problem. Uh, which is a big problem. The sh again, um, uh, the knife is inspired, of course, by uh, Craig Douglas's Shivworks. Uh, his clinch pick was the inspiration, but the problem with, uh, again, in my opinion, with his knife is uh, it's a Pical style blade. So the edge is inward. I don't like that because I, I a lot of the times I thumb the knife, and if you're not used to that, the edge is on the inside. You can you can seriously hurt yourself. But again. Uh, it's a small close quarter blade, which is meant to be drawn under if your hands are buying, which I'll later demonstrate when we get into the demonstration. But basically, uh, it's a Persian upswept small blade that comes with a sheet. Yeah. All right. And that, I've heard that guy uh, mentioned before, um, Wisconsin. His name is Joe. Am I correct? Yeah, Joe Hauk. Hauk. It's, uh, uh, I think it's pronounced Hauk. Hauk Sedge. Is, yeah, no, uh, I, hear he, uh, I hear he does some... Pretty amazing work. Yeah, yeah he, works, uh, he mo works mostly on like solo pieces. So everything is like. That's right here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But he makes beautiful working blades. And this is why I, I got in touch with him because uh, I'm not a big fan of shiny knives and, and polished knives. Yeah, over ordinated yeah. knives. Or, yeah, I got you. And, yeah. yeah, and I saw, his, uh, I saw his work knives, which he made for soldiers uh, overseas, uh, his, some of his axes and stuff like that. And I said, like, this guy values functionality over flesh mm. yeah so yeah, yeah 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 we got some people saying hello hey cindy we got philip the witch finger is a great knife yeah it looks at eric o'brien what's up guys drawing on straight up from the yeah straight to the point can't argue that and we yeah. got june master june from roma <laughs> all right yes if you're watching tell us where you're watching from hit that like button <laughs> and we'll get into it um okay the axe so obviously you kind of take it upon yourself to kind of self-explore the axe um kind of i um, think this is accurate you've almost kind of also made a sub system if you will kind of or or you're developing a subsystem within your system if, yeah. if that's right yeah okay. yeah I, I would say it's more de in, in development than anything because the axe is such a broad uh, broad broad term uh, but i'm developing it uh mixing different things so i'm not trying to force filipino martial arts Principle. Yeah, right, right. I got you. I got you. Yeah, yeah. yeah let it like on its own. I, I, the tomahawk. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. I, I just think for blunt weapon, cutting edge, thrusting, it's, it's like all in one. I mean, if yeah. you think it like the quintessential weapon, for sure. Right, for you know? sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I, I call it the fighting axe because the tomahawk yeah. is like a, it's a very American term. Uh, but, uh, but again, uh, I'm exploring not just the, the colonial era, which was usually paired with the knife. I, I'm exploring the, 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 the early uh, medieval ages. So Vikings used in the migration yeah. period. And this is where actually later on the X, the, the tomahawk shape took shape. And then uh, uh, when, it, uh, when it boomed in, in, the Colon in America during the colonial times, mm -hmm. it's when it took that uh, tomahawk shape, which everyone thinks the, the narrow bit with the, either the pipe or the spike at the end. Yeah. 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 I'm a, I'm a fan. I, I, I'm part of native American. So I did the Cherokee Tomahawk and I thought it was, there was some great stuff in there. I yeah. thought there was some really, really, yeah, I enjoyed it. You know what I mean? Um, matter of fact, I got my, uh, cold steel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let me grab, let me grab, let me grab just mine. 
<laughs> it's it's a it's a <laughs> there we go. I'll go to yeah. 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 So this would be the classical like colonial style uh, uh Yeah, your wood chopping or you utilitarian, what have you. Yeah. Okay. yeah. This is actually more of a percussive instrument, like in fighting. This is where um a lot um uh, the not all X's are the same. For example, if you took this is like we would consider this a migration period X. So this would be like a Viking X. Um, uh, okay. X's that have this uh, cur big bigger curvature swooping edge were meant more for slashing. Uh, gotcha. X's that had that had this shorter bit, a very narrow bit, were more for percussive energy. So um, this would be also for slashing against unarmored opponents. This would be great for fighting someone that was in armor. So if someone was wearing a helmet, you'd basically use this as a helmet. The narrower the bit, the more kinetic energy you're transferring. Gotcha. Shot. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of people think that uh, all, it, it doesn't matter about the design, but it does. This axe was better if you're fighting with a shield because when you're fighting with the shield, you could hook the shield, pull it down, and then thrust oh, the Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, so wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah, just give you an, a short example. Uh, let me just move the uh, one second. So let's say that this was a shield. Basically, okay. if I was if I was fighting someone in the shield wall, I could use this type of X to hook the shield, pull it down, gotcha. and then thrust into his face. So I can hook and thrust. Also, I could hook legs in a shield wall and push with the shield and basically do an ankle pick. And I could do so. The, the, the design of the X changed during the period uh, for what it was meant to. For example, if you mm. look at uh, Roman axes, Roman axes were very narrow because, again, everyone was wearing some sort yeah, of armor. Yeah, armor and helmets. So when you mm. strike, you want to basically do concussive damage. Then, mm. when we start, like losing armor, we're getting into horseback and stuff like that, like the Tabar X, which was a horseman's act you get much more of a crescent shape. So like if you see Persian axes, they, they had a very half moon face. But slashing. Yeah, yeah, because okay. you lashing from horseback. Of course, Neat. the handle would get bigger as of course, because you were fighting on horseback. And then as um, uh, late medieval period, so the like 16th century, uh, axes get again, uh, uh, they get a revamp uh, because now, uh, because now guys are using guys are using only breastplate or using upper body armor, and they were using mm. sabers. And so basically, if you had an axe like this, this is uh, everyone thinks this is like a classical American tomahawk, but this is actually based on a, a historical find. Uh, it's an Avaroslavic axe. Uh, this was a famous axe uh, designed by used by Nikola Shubizrinsky. And what would you do? you would use it if someone was on horseback? You would turn this. You would impale him through the chest piece, pull him down, and then finish with the uh, okay. uh, yeah, yeah. And the bit was oh, narrow the because the armor you wanted more uh, percussive energy than slashing. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I rented yeah. off. I, <laughs> no, 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 no. I, it was yeah. fascinating. No, that was uh, no. And matter of fact, which leads we can probably get into the first question. Yeah. From Dragon. Um, is there a preferred uh, ratio between the weight of the axe and the handle length? As far as, yeah. as, far as you? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, for me, uh, for me, uh, generally fighting axes, what makes a fighting axe a fighting axe is uh, the light head. So if I compare, this is one of my favorite axes. This is a custom piece. It's a bearded axe uh, made uh, by my friend. Never it's seen bearded. anything like that. Wow. Yeah, it's a beautiful X. I don't know if you can see the details. Yeah, on it. I can. Yeah, yeah. So it is very thin. Can you see how thin it is, Dean? I do. I do. It's not yeah. like you chopped wood. The wood chopping axes are very, very thick. So this is a very, very light head. Generally, fighting axes were like somewhere from 500 to 600 grams or 700 grams. Uh, and uh, that's lighter than, uh, let's say, uh, a saber. If if we compare it to the weight, mm. because of the lightness of the of the of the head, you could have a longer handle. And uh, of course, if you're fighting like uh, 
in a shield war or, or in open spaces, you would want that reach advantage. Like you would want it. Yeah, yeah. Now okay. They use these tiny X's and they call them like tomahawks, but that's bullshit. It, because of its, it, it's basically a sniper. Because of its front forward heaviness, whatever you strike, it's going to either break or you're going to hack it. So mm, but, yeah, all the way going forward. Okay, okay. And if you look at it as a sniper, you have to understand uh, that it comes with a price. Uh, the mobility, because of its front heaviness, will tend to pull you into the ground. When pull you, start you into it, it if you yeah. overcommit. Yeah, I guess. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like anything else, like a heavy sword. Like you're just... Uh, yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. yeah, but like if you look at European swords, all of the weight goes to the... Uh, it, at least it tries to go to the hip. To the hand. Yeah. Gotcha. yeah. Okay. So that you can do... Even the Filipino swords, um, the the balance goes towards the yeah, no, right, because it's not top yeah. heavy where you're kind of like yeah, yeah. If you if like if you see if you ever seen um, the late Tatang using like uh, the long play, what is the Sansibar? Sansibar. Sansibar? Yeah. It's very very light. It's very thin. No, Sansibar is very light. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but because you want that uh, man maneuverability, the axe. Yeah, yeah. It's a whole different animal. The axe is very, yeah. very different. The way it wants to pull you forward because basically it's like a, a cross between a stick and a hammer. It's, it's Actually, that's a good analogy. Yeah, right. Pretty much. Stick and a hammer. Yeah, yeah. Wow, interesting. That Man, that was some great information there. That, wow, on axes. <laughs> so, um, so obviously you did a lot of research before you started incorporating it into your system. I mean, it yeah. sounds like. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the the first time I, I started using it was in uh, 2013, uh, but I, I was using it as a lot of guys are now using it. Uh, they're forcing uh, principles on short, tiny hatchets and calling it tomahawk fighting. Um, mm-hmm. uh, the, I, I'll just, I'll, if I can, I'll just give you the pros and cons of an axe. Um, so the, the pros of the axe is its stopping power. Uh, whatever you hit, you will stop. Mm-hmm. It's not even an issue. So the, if you strike someone in the head, you don't. You're not going to cleave their head open, but it's uh, the, it's a lot of concussive energy. Oh so, my gosh! Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, th- those are the pros: stopping power. The cons are uh, basically front heavy, so you have to account for that by mm-hmm. uh, uh, by maneuvering it. Um, usually the problem is you can, someone can grab it because it's basically a stick. Uh, yeah, they, well, there's no consequence grabbing an edge, right? Yes. Yeah. And, and, and that, and that's a big problem if, uh, if you're thinking, uh, because that's the problem, the same problem of a stick. Um, uh, the, the only difference is you can mo- maneuver the stick quickly. You cannot maneuver the ax very mm-hmm. quickly. Uh, so you have to account that people can grab it. And once they mm-hmm. grab it, it becomes a tug of war, and uh, it, it, it's um, it's not very good at close quarter combat. It's not. It's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah not maybe force force that close quarter combat principle. No, I know. I think it's just for the selling point, and yeah. you know, what I mean, they try to make a curriculum have something that wasn't originally intended for. For yeah. I know, and then you know what happens? It gets bastardized, kind yeah. of like what happened a lot with the Karambit. You know what I mean? Yeah, it just yeah, yeah. into this. Yeah. You, know, you know what I mean? And it's just like, yeah, I know. I hate when that happens. You know what I mean? They, For the sake of selling a curriculum. Oh, that's a, that's a great example. You used it, a great example. Rambit. Rambit, yeah. Oh, look yeah. What oh, my God. It got bastardized. Totally yeah. bastardized. Totally. Yeah. I mean, it's not a dueling weapon. And you got these guys. But that's a whole nother. <laughs> yeah. But, a, uh, uh, I just wanted to add. So uh, on the pros and cons. Uh, generally, throughout history, if we look at the fighting axe, uh, the fighting axe, unlike the sword, was always used with, with something because the axe in general, compared to a sword, will always lose. So if you use a Sansibar and I'm using an axe, nine out of ten times you will kill me. So mm. because you're faster, you can thrust more efficiently, um, you can slash, you can uh, redirect more easily. Than when, yes, reach also, that's, that's a big mm. issue. So, uh, but why did people use axes? So the axe is awesome when you pair it with something. So if you pair the axe with the knife, let's say colonial usage. So you will usually see this. Um, so you will usually see this. Uh, my knife is over there. I'll use, I'll use this folding knife. 
the knife uh, the the axe when it's paired with the knife now it becomes uh, it becomes a good good weapon especially if you're fighting um in that period it would be you're fighting someone with the bayonet or with the saber um, when mm. we're century, you can like use it like this or you can if it's a big bowie knife you can lead with the buoy and chamber in the back with the axe so that when you parry or redirect with the lighter weapon, you can basically comp them in the head with the heavier weapon. Or you, oh. can, you can choose to use the axe as, I, 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 when I spar, I spar X forward. I, I spar, I use the knife in the reverse grip and basically uh, I block, I hook with the axe and then when I close the distance, I basically rely on just stabbing to uh, to neck yeah and why why is that so because again as we talked he can grab my ex but i don't care mm -hmm. if I, okay grab yeah if you have that behind you right yes. yeah yeah and if we look at medieval period uh, it's the same thing uh in the shield wall when we're shield to shield i negate your reach of your sword so your sword mm. is in the same length as my axe but you can't hook uh you can't hook and pull shields down with a sword i can do that with an axe so yeah, yeah, yeah. negates the reach distance of um, uh, of the, the reach advantage of the sword. Interesting. That wow. Because I, I mean, I haven't gone deep into the extent you have with it. By I, I play around <laughs> yeah. sparring. I went down the these. And it's a lot of fun. I mean, yeah. like going against this and knife and all that. Like I found it like a lot, a lot of fun. You know what I mean? And um, yeah. you know, it's. Um, but yeah, I you know, but I, and I I would like to get more into it. It's just adding another thing no. to what's currently yeah. going on. <laughs> the, main, the main problem with it uh, that uh, I always say, like when people ask me, like how, how we can use the principles of Filipino martial arts. The problem is you can use it with a plastic trainer. So I can swing my plastic trainer the same way I swing my stick. But <laughs> when I take the real weapon, I noticed oh this doesn't work like that. You can't do angle mm. one and no problem. So this becomes a big, big, big thing because you're trying to continue the momentum. So it's not, you can't break momentum with the next very fast. It, 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 Is that because of the top heaviness you're referring yes. to? I'll give, you, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an okay. example. I hope that you can see me like this. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. no, you're, you're, you're good. Oh yeah, absolutely. Can you see me? So oh, yeah. This, yeah. This, is, uh, this is a plastic trainer. This is made by Chris C Cabin. You you interviewed him. This is oh this, yeah, yeah 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 okay. This is my design, and he made it. So uh, I can swing this without a problem, like a sword or like a stick, whatever. I can do easily angle ones, angle twos. I can do redonda. I can even abanico. Why? Because it's a light axe. Now you take. This, which is 700 mm. francs, now it becomes a problem. Where does it become a problem? You swing this, and because it wants to go to the ground, you hit yourself in the knee. So now oh. you have to pin it. So because the weight is dragging you, you now have to redirect it and start swinging it, like because uh. it becomes very, very different. Doing this becomes very hard. On the shoulder. Yeah, so, you're start tearing shoulder tendons out and yeah, soft yeah. tissue. Yeah. Well, because now my angle changed. So this will be my angle one, and this will be my angle two, this will be my angle three, and this will be my angle four. Unlike the stick, oh. grip, one, two, four. Oh, most. so downward, downward X, upward. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Yeah, because it's um, it's it's very very heavy, and these big strikes you have to set them up with small stuff by using either chopping or slapping or thrusting and then using the momentum. And then from there, I got you. Oh, interesting. Okay. And interesting. you always have to pivot. You cannot stay stationary because a lot of times you'll hit yourself either, if especially if you, if you have a spike on the end. Yeah, you, you, and you bring that down right to the and back. You Ooh. This, and you do this or you do this and you so everything has to be done over the head. Above mm. the world become very, very hard. Again, it's a great strength tool. Yeah, so yeah, I guess. Yeah. Huh. yeah. Where'd you the one that you just had there? Where'd you get that from? So when I started the X exploration, uh, I wanted access for sparring. So I designed this is the Varangian 
this is made by Chris Caban. It's inspired. Yeah. It's uh, it's 60 centimeters in length. Okay, so it's like a regular fighting axe. So if you if you look at these, they're basically okay. Yeah, okay, okay. The same, right? They're not those little pussy ass, gotcha. right? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, the second one is the Zrinski. Basically, same mm. length. It's only a very narrow bit, and it has the spike. The spike. Yeah. So wow. Chris, what, um yeah, hmm. they're based on historical axes. I, 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 okay, I, I, so, yeah. Where do you put, like, for instance, the one that you were moving back there with? If I want, like, where could I get one? I guess something so, that was real. Okay, so uh, just contact Chris Cabin at uh, Hog Mountains. I think it's Hog Mountain Tactical. <laughs> it's Hog. It is Hog Mountain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So he makes these. Another shout out would definitely be to. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but it's Wolpe's training. He makes awesome. Wolpe's awesome. training. He he also his plastic stuff is phenomenal. Yeah. I hear. Yeah. Well, his, his tomahawk. He he makes uh, actually uh, replicas of cold steel tomahawks. So it's great because you can buy a cold steel tomahawk for very cheap, and you can mm. buy the trainer, and they're the exact same weight, which is good for training. Um, which is very good for solo training to develop the. the Risk yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, but like the real one is Chris. Is Chris Kaban? Is he making real ones? No, no, just trainers. Oh, who makes the real ones? Where do you get those? Oh, okay. So uh, this one, uh, this one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So this is a Cold Steel uh, North Hawk. It's oh, so you got you can get that from Cold Steel. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I just pimped it. I just pimped the uh, I pimped the handle and <laughs> everything. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, but it's. Uh, it's awesome because um, they're cheap. This is thirty dollars, and you can. Yeah, cold steel, them. man. They get. I mean, for what they sell, they sell some of their stuff for. It's really. Yeah. I mean, they're not this, bad at all. Yeah, this one is. It's awesome, and it's. I got this on sale for twenty five dollars. So it's cold uh, steel as well. Yeah, cold steel. This is the Trailhawk, and the, the, this is the Trailhawk, and the uh, the the first one was the Norse Hawk. So Trailhawk. And Norsalk. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna check those out because Cold Steel, they're really reasonable, man. They're you can get like great stuff on there without spending a lot of money. You know? Yeah, it's, and it, and it's actually uh, unlike the trench hawk, and because I have also the trench hawk, I have the sog uh, fast hawk and stuff like these modern tomahawks. These are mm -hmm. actually friction fitted, so it's like like how old school tomahawks were actually made. They were friction mm -hmm. fit. They were oh. not. Uh, yeah, they were not to make. I can take these heads off now and, and just by friction and gravity uh, pull them back on, which is great for field use. This is why oh, the tomahawk. Yeah, 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 I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to pick one out. I, I, I'm glad to hear the cool sales, man. Because if you if you compare it, this is the the axe that my friend makes. It's a bearded axe. Uh, it is nailed. Um, it has those uh, wedges in, so the head can't come off. Gotcha, but these gotcha. ones. Yeah, you can just like uh, hit them on the ground and the head comes down. It'll come down. I got you. Okay, I got you. Awesome. Yeah. Wow, fascinating. We got rich Dow. Oh, yeah, it is fascinating, huh? Oh, um, yeah. That was it. All right, I'm ready. Um, if you're ready, I'm ready um, for demos. Yeah, sure. But I wanted to ask, what, what do you want to start with? You want to start with the axe, or, and then we can move to like a knife or or grappling with the knife. Or yeah, going. you know what? Yeah, that makes sense. Let's start with the axe. Sure. Sure. So, um, uh, I'm just gonna, uh, I'll just uh, demo a couple of principles, okay? Uh, sure. With the X, I, I, I don't think that um, uh, you can find this on my page. I made uh, a, a ton of free videos on the X. I think there's a five part series uh, on the X, uh, but I'll just uh, demo uh, a few things how to. Uh, get you started moving with the uh, with the axe, okay? Perfect, yeah, perfect. Uh, so the first thing uh, I want to uh, I want to stress is because this is a front heavy weapon, uh, you cannot. Uh, uh, do quick angle ones and twos. Mm. 
to yeah. get the X moving. How do we get the X moving? Is by using short, small attacks to set up more bigger attacks. The bigger, okay, okay. So the three basic uh, small attacks, which uh, which I use, is uh, the chop, the slap, and the thrust. Okay, the chop. Okay. Yeah, the slap and the thrust. The chop okay. is basically. Uh, can you hear me if I move backwards? Oh yeah, no, fine. We can hear you fine. Yeah. Okay. So the chop is basically. The chop is basically. Uh, if I want to strike his hand, if I uh, if I load up and uh, and he moves his hand, this I'm not exposing yeah. because this uh, it's a front heavy weapon. He can counter very easily. So when you're fighting, mm -hmm. because this is a plastic toy, I can easily get back to the counter strike. But if we were fighting with real stuff, if I missed here, I would need to use a huge amounts of energy to control the momentum. Okay. So the first attack we're going to use is the chop. Basically, when your uh, hand is in this normal position, you basically just use a wrist chopping motion. So you're not swinging. You're basically... Okay just from the wrist and a little bit of elbow. So that is a short attack, which is enough to uh, damage his hand. So from there, you can then step, uh, mm. step and charge up your wrapping strike, which is going to be uh, a big, big strike. Uh, so again, you can chop to the hand or a quick chop to the Okay. And letting the front heaviness of the axe strike at the target, so it's not an angle. One, it's basically right, yeah. a wrist cut, but wrist it's not kind a of snap. Okay, it's a chop. Okay, so uh, a, a basic, basic combination will be: if I was fighting, I would chop at the can, and even if he moves it, I would use that momentum. Recycle it back to his head. I gotcha. Huh. Okay, that would be. Uh, that will be the the the, the first. Uh, so a chop, and as I chop, I use that momentum. The momentum as you're stepping off to the side. I got you. Okay. 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 So yeah. the other option would be. So let's say he's holding a sword or whatever. So he's holding a weapon that's tip that he, uh, that the tip is pointed at me. So uh, if the tip is pointed at me. There is a big problem if I try to strike. So let's say I'm fighting a Sanzibar. If I try to strike, he can just impale me. And the accent, yeah. Because the X is very wide here. I use that motion to slap the weapon, gain momentum, and then strike at the head. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Neat, neat. Basically, a forehand and a backhand motion from this lower guard to basically slap either the hand or the weapon, depending on what I'm fighting. Uh, it, it would be the same if he was using a knife. So if he was using a knife, I would use the same principle. I would slap the hand and then the of the fact slap to wrap around into, again, same principle and one slash. Okay? Okay. So, Slap it with the forehand, step to the side, strike the kid. Or let's say he pulls his hand back, I miss, and now I use the backhand motion and strike to the head. Come on the other side. Okay. Neat, neat. Okay. Are, are you seeing everything? Is, is oh, yeah, perfectly. No, perfectly. Not, perfectly. If I was doing this solo, I would basically either slap, even if I miss, I gain momentum wrapping mm. it. If I miss, I can do a backhand using footwork and then wrapping an angle. Uh, okay. Each. okay. So basically, wrap, strike, right. or wrap. Strike. Okay. Yeah, I'm digging it. <laughs> and now we, we cover one of my favorite attacks. It's the thrust. So the axe is very good at thrusting. People usually don't associate the axe with the thrust, but basically, you're striking someone with this pointing part into the face. The point, okay, okay. This is why X design plays a part. But again, even if I, even if I stabbed you with this, even if I hit you, this. Oh my God, yeah, that's got a consequence. Not, yeah, oh my God. yeah. yeah. Steel is not rattan. This, yeah. this does not conform or bend. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So basically, let's say we're fighting a knife just for the sake of illustration. So 
I can, because the X is so wide here, I can stab at the head. Mm. Also, I can stab directly to the, again, this is a jitsu no principle. I'm basically stabbing. As I stab and push, then I can gain momentum again and do a rapid strike. So I can stab and boom. It is a very deceiving attack because when you're keeping your X down low. No, they're coming up. Yeah. Forward. When you lunge, if he pulls back, that's great. Now you have the momentum. Now you can just regenerate. I got you. Okay, I'm, I'm following you. Yeah. Non-committing strike. So basically, I teach this with the knife. It, it's the same, same principle. Basically, uh, I don't teach uh, stab one, stab four, stab five. I always teach you have a center line stab, you have a palm up stab, and you have a palm down stab. So mm. just simple. The same thing is with the next. I can stab center line. I can maybe miss stab with the palm up, or I can, let's say, move my hand if he's trying to strike my hand, move my hand out of the way, and now I can do a palm down thrust. So center line, palm up, or palm down. Awesome. And when you mentioned uh, JKD, are you talking about the simple direct attack, single direct? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm just talking about from a fencing term from here. Yeah. You're not chambering. You're not doing No, anything. you're just going on tell simple direct. I got you. Yeah, yeah. you know, okay. no, that's excellent that you incorporated. As a matter of fact, just a point of reference, folks that are watching, um, Marco shared a bunch of his knife videos. And one of the things I want to make mention that a lot of JKD conceptual stuff in there, Yes. which non-tell, uh, rear foot shuffle coming up. I forgot yes. to mention that. I'm, and I apologize. But, hey, no, we're mentioning okay. it here. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I I enjoyed it, especially with the, the footwork you incorporated in there, yeah. the shuffle. Uh, yeah. I think that's you know having a JKD background. I don't think it gets enough credit in it in FMA. You know. What I mean? Yeah. So, uh, so uh, just to just to summarize this little, just to summarize it. So we can we're using short non telegraphic attacks, which are not uh, which are not fight enders, but they're <laughs> They're set. They're setting up fight enders. So <laughs> chop at the hand to gain momentum to strike at the hand. Of course, if I'm fighting a knife, I can just directly, like I'm punching it to his stomach. I can basically uh, punch it to the helmet. So that's the chop. I can, if he's stabbing, I can slap that out of the way and strike uh, with an angle one. So I can chop. I can slap, and finally I can step out of the way and just thrust. At his face, mm. as he mm. uh, that was awesome. Yeah, it's a concept of using short little strikes to set up yeah. what we know as angle one wrapping strikes or angle two yeah, wrapping to finish. Yeah, 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 that's awesome. You know what? It's like wrecked. Like you were, uh, like you just when they load up, like you were saying, you just kind of the the ki uh, principle, just yeah. recta. You're just going. Psh. Yeah. <laughs> It's the same thing as uh, in Cali. Yeah. It's almost the same thing. So the chop is very similar to the salto technique. In yeah, Cali. I was going to say. Yeah, yeah. So, the I guess what is, I saw. You know? Yeah. Uh, but the difference is here, it's even sneakier. Why? Because my hand literally just does this. Yeah. I'm going forward. I'm just, I'm basically going uh, straight, like I'm going to punch you in the nuts. And the axe mm. takes the momentum forward. Yeah, forward. just right because of the top heaviness. Well, no, that's a good point. Yeah. That's true. Wow. Yeah. yeah so that's, you know, it's almost like when you're bumping, it's almost like you could be Sao Paulo like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah. great stuff. I thought it was great stuff. Yeah. yeah so that was uh, basically uh, you. Uh, if you get that those principles, so those short attacks, which are very yeah. specific to the X. This is what I'm saying. These attacks are very specific to the X. Oh, oh, apart mm. from the thrust, the chop is very specific. You cannot do this with any other weapon because I'll, maybe with some heavy, heavy machetes, but generally this type of motion and this type of motion is, you can't really do it with a sword, but because this is a big surface, you can yeah. slap. So now imagine this. So, uh, so now imagine this. Yeah. 
basically you're slapping oh your, no you're slapping into the you're gonna break the top no how how would how would it not man and because so yeah. what's the point of this i'm striking with a very large surface so my margin mm -hmm. of error is smaller now compare this if i was going to slash it look how Look how big there uh, the margin of, oh, of the mar yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now look at this. I'm covering his hand. Yeah, look no, gotcha. He's not gonna have a good time. No, I don't think so. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so that was great stuff. I just wanted to illustrate uh, the concepts. Also, um, what else I wanted to show with the X. Uh, of course, everyone likes hooking and, and stuff like that. But uh, mm. oh, I can I can demo one thing. I can demo the problem of the X. Okay. Sure. Okay. So the problem. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the problem of the X is if let's say uh, he has a knife. So let's say he has a knife, and uh, as as we're fighting, I slap this and I break his hand. But it's not a fight ender. So what's the notion? So as I'm trying to hit him, he grabs the axe. What does he do? This is a huge, huge problem. This is a huge problem with the axe. Because now he can just twist and get that axe out of my hand. Maybe not with the broken hand, but he can surely uh, uh, give me problems with, uh, with his other free hand. So uh, how, I, how I deal with this is I started using, I don't know if, if anyone uses it, I call it the shovel grip. So basically, anytime, just be nice. Anytime, let's say, I slap and I go, what? And this happens. This free hand goes over and basically I strike, I strike, and I create again this. Mm. You want to utilize that long range. You don't want to do Filipino martial arts here, cooking and doing this. Yeah, and just all that, I know, to make a curriculum for God's sakes. I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He wins at this range. I cannot move. No, I know, I know. Yeah. So the knife at this distance, I can do all of this stuff. He will not be able to counter. So the moment he grabs this, right? I need to assert the shovel grip. So the shovel grip is basically I'm holding this. So now I can pull my weapon if I'm quick enough to the back, mm. use the butt end of the axe to strike, strike, and then get back to long range. Or okay. if he pins it to my chest and I grab this, now I use just the other way. I just cut, strike, and then hold. Mm. I either, if he pins it here, I do this, this, and create space. Or if he pins it to my chest, then I have to go the other way and again, creating momentum. I hope I, if, I hope no, I'm no, 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 absolutely. No, it made perfect sense. Absolutely. You yeah, know, great stuff. So basically, if he grabs it here, I have to be first. So yeah. if I'm going go inside, I want to enter and protect my weapon. I want to enter and protect my weapon. Now I can win here. If he gets here, I'm in, I'm in big problem. So as he grabs this, I immediately use the elbow, I cover, and now I can trust. I can create space by rotating my body to get mm. back to the long range. Same thing is if we weren't lucky, so he grabbed it, but he pins it to my chest. Now I go the other way, strike, and then mm. so basically I'm doing either this, 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 and then stepping off to long range, or this, 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 right. and then stepping to long range. So, I call this the shovel grip because basically you're holding it. You're, okay, a, okay, I got you. Okay. Yeah. A, no, I, I, great stuff. Yeah. So if I enter here, if I'm the aggressor, and if I manage to get this, it's over. It's over for me. Mm. So the moment someone grabs it, you immediately grab up and you use this to wedge it. Now yeah. I can get this. Yeah, yeah. Start this okay, without slashing myself to pieces. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, that's how we counter. Uh, that's how we counter. Uh, basically, somebody grab. Okay, yeah, great stuff. Negative yeah. aspect of the axe, which usually yeah. happens. Someone rushes in and grabs it. Of course, you can do cool stuff. For example, 
So when he grabs this, if I manage to wedge and I manage to, let's say, break this grip or somehow, bam, bam, and he again insists on grabbing it and I wedge it. Now you can do cool stuff from grappling. So basically, if, uh, uh, if the listeners know what an ankle pick is, just move to the side. So from here, I can hook the leg. Yeah. And the leg, I can stop. Oh, I'm stopping and looking at the camera. So it would be the same principle from wrestling if I went here and, uh, yeah. and I'm just using the X as a hook. Yeah. But it, it's more, that is more art. No, ankle picks, are, ankle picks are a great thing, man. You got to move him back. You just, ankle pick is. Yeah. But again, I can definitely see that. Yeah. Cool aspect of the X. Uh, trying, to hook him, trying to hook him. So you will see a lot of this bullshit. You know. Trying to, you will see this a lot done in demos. So he goes to slash some foot. So you see a lot of this stuff. This is like, this is a uh, myth and magic. It's no, impossible. It's, it's what makes it, it's what they're trying to make the system attractive to draw people into it. And I know, yeah, yeah. This, is not a, <laughs> this is not a control implement. This is a sniper. If it's a sniper, if he's trying to stab me, I'm going to basically yeah. Mm -hmm. Why would I want to enter into this distance so I can do all of these stuff um, and throws and, and bushes so I can demonstrate my empty-handed skills? No, yeah. I know. They're not taking away from the true functionality of the tool. No, I get you. Yeah. That was great stuff. Yeah. I, wow. I'm looking at the camera and I'm not looking at my partner. Because no, 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 you guys, you guys were in the whole time. No, it was perfect. Yeah, it was. Um, no, well done. Yeah, no worries there. Um, so, what do you want? You want to go on to? Uh, did, did anyone ask nice? a question? <laughs> did anyone What's ask? That? Did anyone ask a question? Yeah, no, no, people, nothing but good comments. No, people are just saying good stuff and all that. I no. Um, let me just check my phone in case somebody sent something in late. But no. Um, I think we're good. No, no. Um, would you? Uh, what are you thinking next? Uh, we can uh, we can go to grappling with the knife. So that's a that, that's a hot topic. I would say. <laughs> <laughs> I can let, let's look at it like this because there are a bunch of Filipino martial artists on the forum. Uh, everyone's gonna have their take on how you enter. So let's, I'll, I'll just start from the two on one position so that there's no like, ah, oh, he entered it like this, I would do like yeah, this. No, yeah, I know, yeah. Yeah, so I'll start from a position sure. where yeah. you already have two on one, okay? okay. So uh, just to, just to uh, how do you say, a disclaimer. This is meant just as an exploration when you're in a situation where you magically got two hands on one. Uh, you're either cornered and you can't do nothing. You're a bystander uh, seeing someone get stabbed and you grab their hands. Mm. Uh, again, I am not uh, uh, saying that grappling against the weapon is the only approach. I also do all the striking, drawing into the weapon, drawing yeah, the yeah. gun. So I'm just saying that this is a possibility that can happen and we have a lock flow that we practice so that we get better at it. So I can show you that. Yeah, let's do that. Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. <coughs> yep. So we're good, Dean? Oh, yeah, you're fine. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So... I'm just going to explain quickly sectoring because like uh, so that people watching can more easily relate. So when we're grappling with the weapon, we can be, if he's standing, we can, so we can be on the inside, we can be on the outside, and we can be on the back. So those are three positions uh, that we use. So we can be, uh, let's come closer. So we can be on the inside. This is what a lot of Bert, Bert Richardson uses. This would be that position. Inside would be this seat belt position or basically an arm drag position where you lock the arm, right? Am I am I, am I doing Yeah, two on one outside and uh, baseball back grip. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, so we call this inside 211 or the seatbelt position because I'm inside of his inside of his two hands, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That would be the first one. The baseball grip basically is no man's land. So from baseball grip, if I'm get, having good head control and good tension, I can either go to the outside or I can go to the inside. Okay. Mm. This position, this position would basically be a struggle uh, to determine if I'm going to go to the outside or if I'm going to go to the inside. What right. determines that is the position of my hands. So when I do the baseball grip, I'm basically using only three digits. I'm not grabbing like this because this hand is useless here. My, mm. my fist controls nothing. So I'm using three grips and I slide down. Now I have two. Con uh, um, right. I have way better control than this. Okay. So three fingers. I'm not even gripping with the last uh, last two digits. Okay. So. We can be on the outside, we can be middle ground, and we can be on the inside. We can also, if he starts switching grips, go to the back. Mm. And then, because it's a scramble and it's a fight. So I will show a few variations of my preferred uh, uh, grip, and sure. that's gonna yeah. be the Russian tie from the outside. Okay, so we're sure. not ex exploring the entry, just the Russian tie, right here. So how do I hold the Russian tie? You see a lot of guys, you see a lot of this in Filipino martial arts. So you see them doing this. Yeah, they span yeah. out, yeah, yeah. If you have, if you have uh, anyone who's resisting, this will do nothing. No, I know, they just gonna curl their arm in, yeah, yeah. What am, what am I doing? Uh, I'm grabbing his wrist, I'm grabbing, as tight as possible on his shoulder. I'm ex ex expanding my chest and I'm driving to the ground. And now mm. he's getting more weight on his, and the cell bone is kept in tight. So I'm not doing this. Yeah. My head is low. So this would be a proper, what I consider a proper Russian tie. Why? Because if he starts to pull, pull away, he can't pull. Of mm. course, if I do nothing, he will manage to escape. But I'm keeping huge amounts of pressure and pulling him down to the ground. I hope I'm I'm I'm, I'm close so that the details are showing. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I'm, yeah, yeah. seeing it. Now I'm speaking and I'm looking at the camera. So yeah. this is good. I need to be pushing into his head and driving forward. This is what mm. disrupts his uh, and uh, which prevents him from easily countering. Okay. So basically, wrist control, the deeper I get to the shoulder, the better. And head positioning is looking that way because mm. I want to get into that direction. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. I'm expanding with my chest. So I'm not, I'm not like this. I'm expanding with my chest and grappling and wrestling. Mm. I'm trying to hold tight because this puts a lot of pressure on his elbow. So I'm basically doing this, but with my chest. Okay? With your chest, right, yeah. Yeah, you can see when I do that, he immediately goes like this to alleviate yeah. pressure on the elbow. Okay, uh, so just to add, I'm sorry, I forgot. Okay, so the biggest difference between the empty-handed version of the Russian tie and the weapon version is I'm holding like this, so it's palm down. In grappling, I would hold it palm up. So I'll be holding it like this. Mm. You don't have the luxury of switching so easily. No, yeah, right, right. In the transition, I got you. Yeah, right. Yeah. So in the empty hand of version, you would basically uh, lift your shoulder up, and then you see you get immediately into this position. Yeah, okay. but because some stabbing, you're usually gonna be, uh, you'll usually end up in this grip. Okay, From so that's the main difference. This would be the weapon version, and this would be the empty handed version. Empty -handed. Okay. Uh, yeah, the hand placement is different. Sometimes it will be like this. Most of the time with weapons, you want to push it down and um, extend yeah. to. Gotcha. <laughs> What is that? It's because uh, what did, what did I should buy? 
Okay, so why is that? So when he grabs this, how do I counter this? If I don't have a weapon, I can square off my hips and just study bump. And I can just limp arm it and basically mm -hmm. I can and wiggle out. Okay, yeah. When I'm holding something, I can't limp arm because if I start to limp arm, what happens? I have to drop. No, my right, because you're relaxing your grip to snake your arm out. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, these yeah. guys ask, why don't we see the rush entire two on one grappling in uh, unarmed combat? Uh, because yeah. it it's very hard to get, especially when someone is sweaty. Uh, yeah, and when, hold on. Yeah, yeah, it, it becomes. But when someone is holding something and they don't want to let it go, they are yeah. aiding you in the grip. Okay, yeah. so just sorry for so no, much. No, 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 no worries. So once we're here and we establish this Russian type, we have a few options. One of my favorite options is to draw the blade. So the first option or the first drill that we can do we will draw a blade. I'm using my witch finger. This is a training version and it is slanted downwards. That's because this knife was designed specially for these types of situations. Oh, okay. okay. So we're here and of course, because we're in frame, you're not gonna be statically standing like this. You're gonna be pushing and rushing into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. That's the best. That's the best thing that you can get because now you have time to draw your weapon. But because mm. we're demoing this, stay in frame. Because no one stands like this and he's going to resist. Yeah. So I'm going to constantly keep pushing him like I want to slam his shoulder into the ground. Of course, he's okay. not going to let me, so I'm going to draw the blade. Okay, so once I'm here, this hand slides up and basically does this okay can everyone see Let, let's get closer so basically i'm here i over grip okay so this is grabbing above his shoulder can you see it oh yeah yep so here, i grip it and i hold it tightly pull so now he's pulling me okay this as it grips it grabs the blade so from this position i grip i grab the blade I pull my hips down to pull the blade. Mm. And then, yeah. Okay, so basically, from this position, and I grab it, we're pulling, we're struggling, I secure it, I get my hand. Now, I use my hips to draw the blade so that I don't release pressure on the arm, okay? So when I draw my hips and draw the blade from here, I can start stabbing or I can push off or get yeah. it. So basically, when I grab it, the problem I had, the problem I had, which Guru Slaven pointed out, I would do this. Draw your hand. Oh, you left a gap where he could pull out. Yeah, I got you. I was yeah. relying on my speed. And I'm mm. not going to be fast in 15 years. So yeah, I yeah, need to be yeah. under pure pressure. As we get older, we get that old man strength and muscle mass. So from here, what I learned in sparring is I snake my way. And basically, I do this. I hug him, but... My, As you draw. Okay. No, yeah, now, yeah. I don't draw upwards because that relieves the pressure. I don't draw upwards, okay? I draw, I, I stay in place and I just squat so that the blade gets out, okay? I'm still keeping pressure here. And now I just step, step, step or push up. Mm. <laughs> so, Interesting. Uh, that yeah, the yeah, first no, no. Yes. Everything's, yeah, no, everything's come out clear. Yeah. yeah. We're tight. We're tight. And as I get the purchase on my knife, I basically don't move my hands. I move my mm. ass down so the weapon draws itself. I this way, I, I am not. Yeah. yeah, I don't relinquish pressure. Okay. okay. So that's one variation. Second variation. This is like cunning. This is like if if you're fighting someone that's not not trained as a grappler and he doesn't know, he doesn't have a good balance or a, a good base, you can do this. So basically when you uh, grab the Russian, you basically want to do this. You want to sprawl out with as Bro. much aggression. This causes He alleviates that pressure by also jumping with of course, you want to beat him to the punch so that you. Mm. What happens is, as I drop my weight down, 
this will happen. Okay, am I in frame B? Oh yeah, no, you're, you're good. Yeah, perfect. From this position, instead of doing the classical police jumping knee on back, uh, Stepan is very explosive. He can uh, basically bench press me, bench press. Me. So this I have mm -hmm. I immediately jump with my shin. This causes huge amounts of pain on his muscle. From here, I can basically turn and arm bar. He's tapping, you just can't see it. And as I break the arm, I can get the disarm. So, sorry again. So we're here, I drop myself into the ground. As I flatten him out, I immediately jump over his tricep. So my knee is cutting on his tricep. You can't hear it, but he's like grunting. This sucks. Yeah. I'll, I'll just relieve some of the pressure by lifting up. And you back two on one, turn the thumbs, this is down, and basic, yeah, and there's a tap. So basically, there's a tap. So you basically break the arm and then you can take the blade. Yeah, yeah. So we, we call it staple, we, we call it putting staples down. I don't know if you guys. Yeah, yeah. 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 So but, uh, it's one of the options. Uh, yeah. Usually, uh, when you're fighting, <laughs> I'm sorry, Stepan's. <laughs> oh, he's uh, oh, he's yeah, yeah, I jumped, yeah, yeah, I jumped yeah. you, I jumped you hard. So, uh, uh, the third variation comes, uh, when, okay. I, when I started grappling and doing weapon grappling with higher level grapplers, so mm. they're not gonna fall to the chest, you, they're not gonna fall on their chest, they usually fall to the side, and yeah, then, they're gonna curl, yeah. yeah. So, I'll, I'll show you a variation, just scream if sure. you go go out of the okay yeah I'll, I'll definitely let you know sure okay so from here as i start to i'm not trying to throw in like a rotational force you will see this no guy. you're going straight down i got you okay. well i'm going straight down but now i'll use my front leg to trip him so i'm pushing forward and then my legs do a shuffle and i basically do a throw with his body weight okay okay so from here, I push down, and I, I clear this leg, and now we end up in this situation. Can you see it? Yeah, oh yeah. No, no, fine. Everything's coming fine. Yeah. As he falls, as I'm pressuring him, maybe he has a good base. I can't just uh, pressure him to the ground. So I use this uh, trip to clear, and immediately I run towards the other side to knee on belly. Mm. And then the running part is very, very okay. Okay. So from this position, we're fighting, we are moving him. I trip and immediately I shuffle back and get to a neon belly position where either extend his arm to get the strip again going against the thumb, or if he manages to pull his arms to him, now I start pushing the blade towards him, which gives me a reaction. He pushes back and I get the strip. Yeah, he'll help you with the disarm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, yeah, awesome, awesome. Yeah. So, when we end up in these positions where we're fighting two on one, whatever the case may be, usually what happens is uh, guys will instinctively pull their arms inside. That's a normal yeah. reaction. So, if he extends, this is Christmas for me. Ah, uh, if I get the thumb, I can just strip the blade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Strip. So usually they bring their arms, so you have to be like this neo belly position. Uh, but you're not gonna get the blade. Yeah, I can't get this. So what I do is I use my forearm, I push into their face, which Again, natural reaction. If I'm pushing the blade into your face, you want to push back. As I push, boom, he pushes yeah. back into this arm. So it's a push pull action. Yeah, pull, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, good stuff. Yeah, yeah, right. Like, right. He's going to say which is basically make it easier for you. Sure. To the guys that don't know what I'm talking about, when I grab, I always grab the, I slide to the thumb. Yeah. So this is old school Filipino. Okay. Or I grab the thumb. I'm sorry, sorry. Okay, I grab the thumb and I go like this. And I'm doing the down. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm just using the floor to negate his explosive power. Because if I start doing this standing, he can explode and I lose control. But once right, I pin you, But when we're here, I negate his explosive ability at least 50%. Now I can play with the Filipino stripping, okay? Mm -hmm. So from here, I can push my leg into him, I can twist him, I can do a lot of things. If you start again, if I'm holding 2 1 1, uh, I, again, I wouldn't trust my life on this, but if you're fast enough, and we're grappling and we're pushing. If I manage to get this, great. But I never managed to get this in sparring against guys who yeah, don't. Yeah, it's good. Know, yeah, they it's don't know tough. anything about blade work. They just toughen up. No, them. I know it's tough. Those strips. Here's the thing: with those forearm peel strips. And you kind of mentioned it, man. If you don't have the thumb on those, good luck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because good luck. Like you're just not gonna peel, and then. Then the orientation that they reorientate the blade on you. It's I never understood yeah. why people think those peels are gonna work without having the thumb. So, I, I don't know. How I do most of my disarms, how I manage <laughs> to make them. So I trained I trained all my disarms with a real knife. So what so I always practice just turn that okay. So it's the real knife. So I train stripping with the real knife. I feel what it's like to grip the real blade and to push it out forward or to grab it like this. I feel the edge grab onto my skin. It's very mm. important. Just let me. So I know what it's like when I do this. I want to get the thumb. I know what it's like when we're fighting yeah. on the ground. I say to myself, I can grab this blade like this and this arm. It's not a problem. People think that it, this is like a lightsaber. Uh, yeah, once you have the edge in there and you're grabbing, yeah, no, I, I practiced it too like that. But much to your point, man, if you don't have that thumb, man, that's just – Yeah. Because now yeah. they can just if reload you. Not, if no. you do not have the thumb, do not yeah. go for it. No, uh, no. You, so you've seen, you seen the, the stupid-ass Travis fight smart guy. He's like doing this. So he's doing this. The world of knife defense is full of bullshit. Oh, gee. And he's doing this. No, He's grabbing by the red. Yeah. Of course, you're not gonna strip it because nothing is immobilizing. But look at yeah. the difference. Now I grab the thumb. Oh, oh yeah, no, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, what if I twist it? Ah, th then there's no pressure. So yeah, it's a yeah. biomechanical issue. He is grabbing. Oh, no, no, absolutely. Yeah. So you you've seen that clip? The world of night. No, yeah, you know like, I think not. Not that I'm not that I'm defending him. I think what he did, because I've seen, I've, I've watched that several times just to kind of get where he's coming from. Because there's the, there's some things he's saying in there that is true. I think what he, the, some of the particular things he extracted as far as the examples are concerned, I think he saw a video where the guy was, was doing that. And, of course, the compliant partner probably just let it go. You know what I mean? You know, yeah. I, I, again, I'm not trying to defend him. I'm just thinking, like, where he might have got that from. No, of course, but what I'm saying is, um, uh, if you understand the stripping from Filipino martial arts, you, oh, yeah, can merge yeah, it. you know it's, yeah, yeah. You can merge it into wrestling. For example, I showed you, if I'm neon belly and I'm fighting someone, uh, I'll just, I'll talk while I demo. Sure. So we end up in this position and I'm, he's fighting me, use your other arm. So he grabs, he pushes, grab my arm. So now we're in this fight. If I don't have the thumb, I'm not gonna go for the blade. If I'm just yeah, controlling yeah. the blade, I'm not gonna go for this. I'll rather uh, immobilize it, move it, and move it to something else rather yeah. than going for a strip. This was a dumb, yeah, this was a dumb demonstration. I went for an arm barrel. Of, of course, you can, you can, Stand here and start dropping punches. You can just hit, yeah. You can, if if you have control, you can strike. Mm. If you have the thumb, you have the disarm. If you don't have the thumb, don't go for a disarm. It's no, simple. No, it's good. Yeah, I I totally agree, man. I just never understood those strips. Like, so I'm not gonna mention the systems that I that I was exposed to those just for sake of politics, but they just I could never make them work without the thumb like there's just no way like 
but that yeah. is our, that is our uh, you uh, I don't know if you if you follow Hicks and Gracie, but Hickson is like all about positional pressure and strength. He says if you do not have a position, don't go for a submission. No, I, I remember. No, absolutely right. If you're on position, don't hit because until you have position, right? It's the same thing, but we just totally. It's, it's a micro <laughs> micro position. If I yeah, have yeah, that, but, but but it's good. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. It's a great analogy, right? If you don't have position, don't go for that strip because don't it's going to get. And our goal, guys are like, what's my what's my goal when I'm grappling against the knife? One, it should be to have control. If you have control, mm. then you assess because I, 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 when I teach it, I, 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 I say like this. Do you have enough control? Yes. Mm. Can you draw your weapon? Yes. Draw it. Mm. Do you have enough control? Yes. Do you have a weapon? No. Go for a throw. Kill his mobility. Then work your way to the thumb. Do you have uh, enough control? No. Get more control or create the distance. That, 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 that's the thing because those are those little check uh, checklist. You want to have a checklist when you're no, fighting. Yeah. Your brain goes, Am I, do I have enough control? Can I go for this role? Yes, go. Yeah. Can I grab the thumb? I grab the thumb. I'm, I'm already 90% there. Mm. Yeah. I, yeah, I totally agree with you. I mean, it's like not just from the point of reference of your checklist. Um, I think what it comes down to, I mean, you've talked about this before. I just think not enough people test their material out. I think and what it is is they get handed to it so they make the assumption because it was handed to them that's going to work. They didn't check it, yeah. or if there is an aspect of integrity, they'll say, "Hey, look, I never tested this out. This was given to me. I'm giving it to you." You know, but uh, yeah, I agree. It's just um, it's tough, man. It's. Uh, I'll illustrate your point even better. So we came up with this two weeks ago, and my buddy. He's a South African, by the way. We, he, he's a long time to player. I was struggling when we grapple with the gun. I would get yeah. him first attack with uh, basically uh, a two on one trap where you basically pin the arm that's holding the knife to his body. And I didn't have a success rate in finishing it. Like the guy would eventually turn into me. I couldn't get a disarm. And we were like looking at like, how can we get a guy? Uh, to the ground to disarm. So he came up with this, but I'm just illustrating your point. If you do not pressure test, you will not find different answers. Can I show it real quick? Oh, please do. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, we're in the thrusting position. So, uh, do you see us? Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, perfect. So we're, we're fine. Yep. Position. So, um, a lot of the times you'll start losing control here. It's normal. So what he does is usually what people would do instinctively, not nice fighters. I'm saying people will swap their hands. They'll change grip. And now you have a huge, huge problem. Because yeah. like, so what we do is when he starts changing the grip, this hand holds this and this blocks at the bicep. When it blocks at the bicep, we slide down to the wrist. As we're sliding down. We basically come to the back into this two on one track. Oh, rears, okay. Rear seatbelt. Okay. Do you see it? Should I show it? Oh, yeah. No, no. I, I, I saw. Yeah. You want to show it? I saw the transition, but if you want to show it closer, sure. Here, usually what people will do naturally will do this. This is mm. like a natural reaction. Yeah, and I'll struggle. Yeah, yeah. So if you try, again, switch. So if you try to follow his wrist, you, this will happen. He will stab me. And, yeah, yeah this, will, this happens so many times. I was like, something's wrong. So instead of, so instead of going for the wrist and missing it, catch the crook where the bicep mm. meets. Okay. So now as he chambers, uh, you follow him. And now you can slide to the wrist and get to the back, okay? So just so you see, I have two hands on one. Ideally, this would be here. Mm. Okay, ideally, usually is gonna be, instead of under the arm, it's gonna be over the arm, but it's still good. So this is better, but you're not gonna get this usually when you're fighting someone that knows. You'll usually get this, okay? So again, from the rush, uh, switch hands. So from the rushing, he goes, switch, you block where the bicep is, slide to the wrist, and get 
to the back. Again, your head should be always in his back. I'm just looking at the camera, okay? Yeah. So, now that so we're here, he switches it, you follow it immediately, putting pressure, you're at this two on one. So how to finish mm -hmm. this? There's a couple of options. Uh, from this side, if, if you're looking, so if I just try to drag him to the ground and he like assumes the chair position, I can easily drag him to the ground, push off, strike, whatever. But that's if you're fighting someone that doesn't know shit about grappling. Yeah. If you're yeah. fighting someone base, you're not gonna be able to. So once you start pushing them down, you have this problem. He'll base out and eventually he will switch the knife again. And now you have a huge problem. Okay? Mm -hmm. So for my friend, for my friend, my, my South African friend did he said, like, let's do a throw where we try to smash their face into the ground. So when when we're here, instead of trying to lift them up or throw them and pick them up, basically. This leg traps his foot and you just dive roll into the ground. Uh, what are you just, is, okay, okay. Yeah, what happens is he cannot post on that hand. No, he can't, he so can't brace he's out. Flying, he, can't, he can't brace off. Yeah. yeah, so he's flying with his weight and your weight into the ground. Yeah, that's a nasty crash. He's in here that you see from this side. And mm. as I'm trying to pick him up, right? Ah. Hook this leg and I pull it towards my. I'm not gonna throw him because this. Yeah, is, yeah. But you're basically doing dive yeah. roll into the ground. The yeah, great thing that's a yeah. can't break fall. Thing. That's nasty. Yeah. Yeah, not just the nasty. Thing. What ends up is uh, lazy, not put in a box. Lazy, 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 lazy. So you you will end up. Uh, let me hook your leg. So you will end up like this, which is great. I don't know if you can see because I can now see you. Yeah. you can push off his leg is, and his knife is strapped yeah. under him. You can strike, you can stomp, you can get to your weapon, but it's a yeah. great little It's awesome. a great little You grab their arm and you just dive roll. As they're falling, they can't post this. They just fall. No, I know. They can't, they, I know. They're just taking it. Yeah. yeah I, I just Man. wanted to see what yeah, we yeah. came up yeah, with. That was because no, we were no. issues. Once you start, once you even manage to pin their arm, a lot of guys will learn how to turn into you. They'll base, they'll scramble, they'll yeah, start. Yeah, they got really good hip, hip rotation. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. and you start losing the control. And you're like, I'm, I'm losing control, I'm losing control. No, I know, and which is where the edge weapon and, is. Yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, it's scary. Yeah. Yeah, that's, no, that's, uh, that's, that's awesome. That's a South African mentality for you. He's like, we should smash their face <laughs> into the concrete. Just drive Cape it in. Town. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All that, that that Cape Town stuff. Jeez, man. Um, I know. They're, they're, yeah, there's a mentality down there. Just right. See it with Piper, man. There's a. Yeah, it's not. A, yeah, it's not a good mentality down there. I do have. I got a couple more questions though before we close out. That was great stuff. Thank you, by the way. Um, for, for, this is uh, uh, yeah. kind of a I'm funny so question crazy. from Dragon. <laughs> um, his question is, what kind of presents does he give to his wife for anniversaries where she can tolerate all his combat training shenanigans? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's his yeah. that's his question. Sure, I'll answer that. <laughs> so I'll answer that. Uh, luckily, uh, she trains. Uh, she doesn't train anymore with me. She trains aerial yoga now. Uh, but mm. uh, in the early days, she did a lot of nice stuff, uh, the kickboxing and stuff like that. So I, I'm good. She understands the mentality. <laughs> so she's 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 okay with it. She's accepted it. <laughs> yeah. <of course>. <laughs> <laughs> so. But that was great stuff. We I'm just making sure I'm just not missing anything. Yeah, the Cape Town crash, air <laughs> Cobra. Yeah, that, that's a good way to call it the Cape Town crash. Yeah, oh, just, just, to, just to point out, just to point out, my friend is uh, there's this big rivalry between uh, between uh, Cape Town and Johannesburg. My friend's from Jayburg, so Johannesburg, <laughs> yes, I know, yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, yeah, I tell yeah. you, I mean, I love Piper. I really do. I love it from the 
not that I need more ways. It's not from the offensive perspective, but I, I always like things. Okay. How would I counter it? How would I defend against that? Just like, yeah. just from that, you know, just to keep this going, not so much. Of, I'm going to be ambushing anybody. Honestly. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, but it's, um, there's a man just from really getting deep in it. There is a, you know, not obviously it comes from the criminal element, but there's really the criminal element, you know, yeah. I don't, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, that's not good stuff. But um, future. So wait, hey, just before I close out, what are your future goals for you and your and your system? Whether it be the axe or whatever you got going on, what are your future goals? So my future goals for myself is uh, to uh, to uh, I've started training now online uh, with uh, Guru Arnold Narza from. I, I think I, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I train as much as possible with him uh, i want to get better at the source but from an art perspective um uh, i i know i'm not going to duel anyone so from a historical arts whatever you call it from a mm -hmm. dueling perspective i want to get better at that i want to i want to get better at grappling i want to get better i want to i want to grapple a, 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 a ton more now we're in this uh, stupid pandemic we uh, have to train mm -hmm. elite Brazilian yeah so i want to get that and i want to get uh, down the road, I want to, because I'm blind in one eye. I'm, uh, someone was making a joke like, why are your eyes so weird? I'm blind in one, one eye and uh, I, I, from strikes. So uh, I lost the sight in my eye. And well, I'm sorry, but obviously you're doing, you're compensated for, you're doing well. I mean, I mean, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. My, my brain learned to compensate by, but like yeah. fighting, with, uh, th this is why, why I like to spar with headgear because it's a pain in the ass. Like my depth perception is not like normal people. When I put the mask on, I see clearly the grill more than the person. So where you're, because my depth perception sucks. I cannot. Uh, I got you. I got you. So this is one of the reasons why I do a lot of hand and leg sparring because I don't need the helmet. <laughs> I no, no. Yeah. 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 And uh, one of the goals also is uh, I want to get back into striking because uh, the eye thing has put a put, put a stop on my striking because I can't I I, I shouldn't. You can't get, afford, man. You could get re-injured. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, I, yeah. I wish to I wish to, to 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 get back into the 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 groove the 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 Dutch style kickboxing. The I, I like to mix everything up. So you have to know how to mm. strike. You have to know how to grapple. And well, you yeah, you have it all. But if he just did mid work to stay sharp, yeah, you know what I mean, yeah. love that. Yeah, I would yeah, love I that. I mean, this mid work is excellent. Cardio, you're hitting mids. I mean, <laughs> and you're not going to potentially subject your eye, maybe it's like another injury or something. I mean, I, mid, I love like, mid work. Yeah, me, me, I, I used to, I used to do mid work, but I now uh, we put on gloves. And I'll just like cover to close the distance. Yeah, so, you I'll close in. Right? Yeah. So now it's mostly like uh, the guys that I train jiu-jitsu with uh, on Sundays, we like to keep that street element. So we do strikes on the ground and stuff mm, like that. On the ground, yeah, we yeah. Do it at a low pace. We do it at a low pace because, uh, yeah. again, one wrong strike and I could lose the eye again. So. It's just not worth it. Yeah, yeah, like, right. I mean, I think there's something to be said kind of going at that Tai Chi where you can feel things and all that. Like who's to say you have to go ballistic all the time? I mean, there's there's a benefit to kind of going that slow and feeling things and yeah and, and all that. And um, yeah, we I do a lot of I still do a lot of grappling. It's very taxing on me though. I mean, I'm yeah. telling you, like um, it's but I do it just because of maintenance. And what I do is I always do it with expecting a weapon to be drawn. So just to yeah. keep me like yeah. in that loop where like I'm not looking for arm bar or Americana or you yeah. know a bunch of things, you know. Yeah, but it's but taxing like, though. Yeah, Rough. it is. Uh, especially uh, like you can serve, you can conserve energy when you're ground grappling. You can conserve energy. You can play bottom, and you can like be patient and stuff like that. But stand up mm -hmm. grappling is so taxing, like fighting for grips. Oh, and you going against like I don't know who you have in your camp. Yeah. Like I like a couple D one wrestlers in the clinch, and man, yeah. you have no idea until you're in the clinch when one of those guys they're dry. Yeah. That yeah. constant, yeah, the the slapping when they grab the oh, cut, that, just that drive. And when have you ever met a wrestler who's gassed out? 
They have no, like a no, never. just like unstoppable energy. They're just constantly. <laughs> yeah, but I, I told you, I told you. Sorry, my my coach uh, in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is a black belt under the famous Roger Gracie, which is regarded as one of the best Brazilian oh, Jiu Jitsu. Oh, Hoyler! Wow. Yeah, no, yeah. no, not Hoyler. Hoger. Hoger is. Oh, Hoger. Like, okay, okay, okay. Okay. Hoger is a huge, huge man, and. Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, just to give you a perspective, my coach is bigger than Alistair Overy. Like, my coach is 120 kilos. That's 260. Uh, and he's almost two meters tall. His wrists are as my, thick as my thighs. So we did this grappling. with. Them. I did this grappling. I told you the story. He grabbed my wrist, and I couldn't – with one hand. And I, <laughs> and I couldn't – I couldn't break the, the, you know how you do this, you do an arm drag. Yeah, you the, you're going to answer the telephone and the whole, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so what happened is, so what happened is, uh, I couldn't break the grip. So what happened is, he was grabbing my, grab my wrist. So he was holding it, not with two arms. He was just like, we were here. And I couldn't break it. I tried to do this. I tried to do all of this stuff. Nothing. He's like a guy. So I started doing this because that's the only script yeah. I, could do. I, could, I could do against i couldn't so, the, so the, the infamous lameco move wouldn't even work you couldn't yeah. know no no yeah. i don't know it I, I didn't know it was in lameco but it's basically a duck that's where i first saw it i mean yeah. that's yeah so this would be basically a duck under from wrestling basically you would yeah 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 I, I, again i'm not saying lameco okay it's that's why i first was exposed yeah, to right. the mutual grab yeah. And, and he just, I, I couldn't do anything. So I was like, I'll put the knife onto his forearm and I just break, straight, knee break. break. Wow. Yeah, well, yeah. That's pretty man. That's pretty scary when somebody grabs your wrist and you can't freaking do yeah, anything. People don't have an idea. Like people say, Oh, oh my god, wrestling, jujitsu, that's just a sport. When you when you meet people that were that are that invested 20, 30 years in it, world class. It's like you, like he moves me like a child. Like I literally sometimes say, like it's like you're grappling. I'm like a child to you. Like he just moves me. Like <laughs> isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah. I know. Like they're just, you know. Oh man, I know. That's when you real. I tell you, that's when you real. That's when he kicks in humility, man. Like yeah. yeah. When you're, you know what I mean. When somebody's just kind of just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we, are, we are not all the same this is what i learned like when you people say well we have two feet and we have two hands and we're like yeah we're not we're, uh, we, yeah those are people who've never been in the trenches those, <laughs> those are those people yeah they've never been in the trenches with elite uh yeah that, that's that's my answer to those people yeah yeah i mean wow but this is man this has been awesome um you know so the usual status quo um downloaded you know and you know, post it to your wallet, but th those are, thank you so much. Those are great, uh, you know, great demos. I just want to thank your friend too, or your training partner there. Yeah. You have to I'll thank him. Is he, is he there? Yeah, he is. Why, Stephen? Wait. Uh, no, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Is his shoulder okay? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Stephen is strong. He's, he's very, very strong. Okay. 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 Yeah. So, um, yeah. Are there but, any more questions? Uh, let me double. I don't know. I did get those. No, just, I mean, really um, positive comments, of course. You know, yeah, are there uh, anything you would never grapple with the weapon? You will die. Don't ever go to the ground. It's magically filled with crocodiles. And you will die. Yeah. I tell you, it's amazing, though, um, just how many don't explore that with weapons, though. You know, I think it's improving because. Social media, more people doing it. I mean, Burton advocating it. Uh, you know, I think more people are seeing it. And I but I tell you, I have his you DVD two on one, the the street grappling versus a blade. Yeah. Oh, did you get it? Yeah, I got it when it came out. Yeah, I did the whole program. Um, a lot of stuff I like. I mean, I I think you know, um, I like the you know this whole the, uh, the whole thing with the guard. When you're in somebody's guard, or I'm sorry, when you have somebody in your guard, yeah, I just find that sometimes the kick out is the best thing you can do because they just have too much access to you. You know, it is, it is, it is. You know? But again, 
like I showed you the Russian two on one, right? Uh, we yeah. we then oh, usually what will happen is when when people are wearing clothes, you can actually yeah you can yeah and it was a bare grip, but it's if you don't have like, you don't have that though, yeah. man. They're just yeah. Yeah, but like what 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 he what he was saying, like when you're in the guard, uh, if he's wearing a t-shirt, then okay. But you can easily control the sleeves, like you can go for that like spider guard where you basically no, put, and you can put the elbows. Put, yeah, 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 yeah. You can go for that again. I would kick out and draw my blade. You I'm do not. You though, but here's the thing. thing. Yeah, you do not want to be Holy. the one on the ground. That's the that's yeah, the I worst thing. Yeah. No, I know, I know. But if I, if they have the clothing, no, I found that works. And then I put my knee and put their arm yes. over my knee and yes. it works well. Yes. Absolutely. But they don't have clothing on. Yeah, it's a man. I, I always where, found kicking you, out. Yeah, but where do you live? You're in uh, in Connecticut, right? Yeah, yeah. So people wear jackets. It's oh, yeah. Not, no, no, no. During winter, yeah, I'll be good. Like, yeah, but like summer, yeah. I mean, generally speaking, yeah. eight months out of the year. You know, I mean, long sleeve, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, yeah. But I agree with you. Yeah, if you can get that clothing, I mean, that's excellent, right? But yeah. no clothing, and man. The the reason also is uh, uh, I'll, just, just, I'll just quickly get back to when we started the podcast is the knife design. This is why this knife was designed because I uh, the problem of uh, so when you start when you start drawing two on the knife. So when someone grabs it, it's really hard to pull the blade. This is why this blade was designed so that I move my hips. You just blade. drop. That is neat. That's clever. That I, is I think clever. It's not my idea. So I'll, 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 this uh, this type of drawing with your hips, that's Craig Douglas's work. That's like from Shivers. But again, um, I took the design because that is whenever you're grappling, whenever you're in any type of position, I can just, even if he traps my arm, even if he traps, you have a better hip. I don't have a battle. The knife is out. Now I can break mm, grip. Yeah. Can grip and stab. I can even come up under, break grip and stab. I can do a lot yeah. of things, but this knife, you ain't stripping it like this. That, no, that, there's not. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I do like that design. That is that is nice. I do like that. Wow. The that is jam. So what the um, is very nasty. It is very, yeah. very nasty. Now you see it. Look, I mean, it just—it looks sturdy too. Yeah. 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 Wow. No. That, again, I want to thank you for coming on. You know, um, I hope this is not the last time we see you. I like down the road. I'd like to bring you back if you develop any more programs or whatever. You know, yeah. just keep it. Obviously, keep in touch with me. You know. Yeah. Because sure. um, if you further develop anything else, let me know. Um, yeah. That's the reason to bring you back on for you to demo stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, sure. I hope you yeah. you like the demos. I was like trying to watch if everything is no. Different. They were good. No, I thought they were well. They were well articulated. I mean, okay. the detail was there. I thought they were really not. They were well done. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. yeah bravo. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know. But I appreciate it. So please stay in touch, and if you develop new areas, let me know. I'll bring you back sure. on. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, Marco. Uh, thank you for doing this and. You know, thank your friend as well, and um, yeah. hopefully he's. Uh, he's <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. You take care of yourself. Yeah. Bye, Dean. Bye. Take care. <laughs> All right. That concludes uh, episode 142, which I'm going to have to kind of delay posting because I have a couple of other episodes I haven't been able to get up yet. Dwight hasn't given me uh, 140 yet, and uh, and everything else. Unless I just put them up and I just don't put a number to them yet. Uh, but at any rate, oh, tomorrow night uh, auction, um, live auction. We're going to be doing it within the um, uh, and within the group FMA discussion. So uh, I think that's going to be seven o'clock. I just got to kind of confer with uh, Brian there and all that but that should be tomorrow night at 7 p.m eastern time it'll be done in the live group uh we're still working on some uh, details as far as i would do it but i think it's gonna be people that are you know watching it and all that i mean i'm sorry can have brian making thousands and thousands of tickets so <laughs> but at any rate uh that was you uh, uh, tuned in i uh, thank you next episode is
what is next episode? Actually, Sabrina, Tuesday night, I believe, from uh, she's a KI rep uh, under, I believe, Kiro under Naruto. So I think she's Tuesday night and all that. So, uh, but at any rate, um, I shall see you guys then. All right. Those of you tuned in, watch, comment, and submit questions. Thank you.